Welcome back to Introduction to Game Development. This is Computer Science 303 at Missouri State University. My name is Matthew, and I'll be uh, showing you uh, through our second tutorial video here today. Um, let me preface our tutorial again with the disclaimer that I am not an expert. Uh, today's subject will be over the brush geometry, or BSP brushes, or builder brush. Uh, any, way, any way you might hear it, the, they're all referring to the same thing. Now, uh, we didn't use any brushes in our last tutorial, but you'll remember that we drew some distinction between static meshes and the builder brush as we were pointing out uh, some of the objects you see in the uh, viewports as you're in the editor. The uh, builder brush is a tool in UDK that we can use to prototype and block out our levels. While this is a great tool for fleshing things out and testing our general layout, uh, of the level. It has some limitations in that it is less efficiently handled and uh, uh, less, less efficiently handled than our static meshes specifically. And uh, brushes do not support dynamic shading properly. So we won't want to actually leave our brushwork in the level when it comes time to publish our game. Uh, but don't worry though, this is still a valuable skill because any brushwork that we add will eventually be able to uh, uh, paint it with different materials and convert it into a static mesh so that it, it will run more efficiently in our final game. Now, if you remember last time, we used a template just to show you a few things, but this time we're going to actually be generating uh, a level that we're going to use in future labs, and so we're going to begin with an empty map. So let's go ahead and open UDK Editor. Now, your settings may be such that uh, it opens with a, a template world already. Mine are that it sets with a uh, uh, that starts with an empty map to begin with. If you don't already have an empty map, then just click to uh, new map and blank map. And now we can go ahead and close welcome screen and the content browser, which we don't need right away. Now uh, you'll notice uh, quite a bit's different than last time. I'll go ahead and open up our uh, our uh, perspective viewport here as maximized. And so last time we had a, a beautiful skybox with rolling clouds and uh, dominant directional light with the uh, sun pouring down. We had a static mesh for a platform beneath us. We had a static mesh for a cube in front of us. Um, we had a player start. We had uh, light mass importance volumes. We had uh, uh, an exponential height fog, uh, and a number of other things that we don't have when we begin with an empty map. Now, with a blank map, we'll have to build all of these things ourselves. So, to begin with, we do see one thing that's the same, and that's our builder brush. The uh, builder brush is the basic component with which we can define all kinds of shapes here. Uh, we have a number of buttons here on the left side, and by selecting each of these, we can see a number of uh, prefabricated shapes that uh, Epic has built into UDK. So we started with a cube. We can also achieve a cone here. There's a curved staircase, a cylinder, a linear staircase, a, a, 2D, a 2D planar sheet here, which we are not going to use. It, it was useful in previous versions of UDK, however, I've noticed that in uh, recent versions, at least since November, uh, they don't uh, appear to uh, render materials on them properly now. And in any case, they never had collision, so they were really only good for, uh, uh, for uh, painting some surface without ever allowing the player to get near it. Um, then we also have spiral staircases where it's uh, uh, always such that it'll begin at one point and it'll always connect back up at the uh, same point there uh, unless we change the properties. We have the tetrahedron where we can increase the number of surfaces this has so that it eventually could um, approach the uh, shape of the sphere. And then as well we have uh, a card shape here which is really just two intersecting planar brushes and so we will also be avoiding these. So we won't be using the card shape and we won't be using the sheet shape. The others though are quite useful. We'll go back to the cube shape which we began with. 
Now, last time we had a platform that we could stand on. Since we don't have a platform to begin with now, we have to create one ourselves. And so if we right-click on any of these uh, brush icons, we'll be able to define some of its properties. So for uh, the uh, cubic brush here, we'll go ahead and right-click on it, and we can see our properties here. We have X, Y, and Z. Those are our uh, width, length, and height dimensions. And to get a platform, uh, I find, uh, or when resizing any shape or any, any brush, I find that working by powers of two will uh, usually allow everything to line up just fine to begin with. We'll be adjusting things as we go though, so that's going to change over time, surely. And so I, I've given it uh, uh, 10, 24 units uh, in the uh, width, uh, 10, 24 units in the uh, length, and now the height this is just going to be a short little platform to, for us to walk on, so let's just make that 16. And so now we have a shape defined for this rectangle that we've stretched out into a platform that we can stand on. So we'll go ahead and hit build. We didn't really need to since it went as we went, since it built as we went, rather. But now we have this shape defined by our builder brush. And you'll see below the builder brushes here, it's marked CSG. We have uh, four different options here. We have uh, an additive brush, a subtractive brush, and then we have intersect and de-intersect. Now the additive brush will always add the shape that we've defined with our brush. The subtractive brush will always remove that shape and it requires having actually added brushes already so that we could subtract some volume out of them. Uh, and then we also have, uh, with the intersect and de-intersect, it doesn't actually uh, add or subtract anything from the level, but rather it'll adjust the shape of your brush as it exists uh, and uh, allow you to create new additions or subtractions based off of that new shape that it's achieved. Now, uh, since we've already got our shape defined here and we just need a simple platform, let's go ahead and you'll see... Uh, as we highlight over that button for uh, the additive brush, there's the hotkey for Control A. So anytime we press Control A, it will add that brush to the level. And seeing there, we automatically just created a checkerboard pattern here uh, on our uh, platform. This is the default material that's applied to all brushes that we might create. And you'll notice also that we're defaulted to be in the unlit uh, viewing mode. Alt 3 is how you would normally access that, but it's it's defaulted to that for, for us now. And that's because we don't actually have any uh, real lights in the level. If we were to select lit mode, everything goes dark because we can't actually see anything without any light source in the level. Last time we had a, a dominant directional light this time, we just want to put in a couple lights to work with, so we'll be using what we call point lights. Now, for a point light, to add one of those, uh, there's various ways to add one, but if you just hold the L key and press left click, now we've actually added a... I actually added two. Let me delete one of them. So we have this point light that we just created. We can raise it up a little bit with our uh, translation tool. And we can see it as, it as it is lit in the level. Unlit, back to the way we saw it a moment ago. Now with the lit, we can actually see it with the individual light source. Now these point lights, we can do a number of things with them. Other than just moving them around, you'll remember if we press spacebar, we can go to the different uh, modes. So from translation mode, we can switch to rotation. It doesn't really affect the light, though, since it's... Uh, omnidirectional. Press space again though and it brings us to our scaling uh, uh, widget. With this we can change the uh, radius of the light source and we can expand it out. At any point also we can right click on that point light and if you see here point light properties there's a number of different things we can change about it uh, for uh, uh, its uh, it, the rate at which the light falls off or even the color of the light and uh, how uh, saturated it is and so on. Uh, we won't be messing with any of that stuff right now though, so 
just adding the light as they I as they are. Adding the lights as they are is all we really need to accomplish for now, just so that we have uh, uh, a little light on our situation here while we're working. And so now we don't yet have a player start position, but we could go ahead and jump into the level as 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 we'd like right now. So if we went ahead, uh, we've built a brush, we've added some light. Uh, we haven't added anything that requires pathing yet since we don't have a player start, but let's go ahead and hit build all. That's this button right here. So we have a number of different build buttons here. That was for geometry, light, and pathing. But if we just hit build all, that will go ahead and select all of them. Now it's doing a number of things whenever it builds. Uh, it's uh, figuring out where all the brushes are so it can set the geometry. Um, it has uh, uh, it es essentially simulates light by uh, emitting photons and allowing it to bounce off all those shapes and it takes a little bit of time for it to render. Now you'll notice here we have uh, a few uh, warnings here. Maps not built with production lighting and also the map should have a kill Z set. A kill Z setting is uh, the uh, altitude at which we want uh, the uh, player to automatically be killed. Like, for instance, if you were to like fall off a ravine or off the edge of the map or something. And so let's go ahead and close that. And uh, we don't necessarily need to set those properties right away, but we'll go ahead and uh, play this level. And it says, oh, we couldn't find a starting spot, right? But we can go ahead and still play by just right-clicking on any spot that we like and choose Play From Here. So that just goes ahead and starts us right at that position that we clicked on. So here's the platform we created the light source, which we can't actually see the light bulb now, it's just an icon indicating where the light source was. But it's lit the uh, uh, the area beneath us so that we're able to actually maneuver around and not walk off the edge without realizing it. So we've got a start of it now, but we don't want to always have to choose some random location to play from here, so we need to add a player start of our own. So if we go ahead and right click, uh, add actor, and then add player start. So this is the only player start in the zone, so it'll just default to be our primary starting location for now. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and set that world view property. So if we go to view, uh, go to world properties rather, and now under kill Z, let's see right here, we have it set at a, a, an extraordinarily uh, uh, large value and magnitude, so let's go ahead and set that to zero. And that's not very far beneath us, but we don't necessarily need to be falling for uh, any amount of time if we've fallen off the edge, since we're just prototyping our level now. So we've set that, and uh, I also like to go ahead and set the default game type like we did last time to UT Deathmatch. That way we can go ahead and spawn bots if we need to, and uh, I just uh, prefer testing with a gun in my hand. So we'll go ahead and close those. And now if we hit uh, right here, you'll see paths need to be rebuilt. And since we built everything before adding that player start, now if we go back to build paths, we can just build paths indiv individually. So again, we have the warning map not built with production lighting, but that's fine. So we'll go ahead and close that. And here we are again. So now it's approaching a lot more of the functionality that we had before. We'll go ahead and close that again. Now we've built a platform and uh, we did that simply enough by just defining the shape of the cube to match what we wanted for the platform. But what if we wanted to build a room? Now if we wanted to build a room um, well, for one, we could go ahead and build a number of walls, a floor, and a ceiling out of uh, multiple brushes. It, it might t take a little while, but it, it would certainly be accomplishable. But there's an easier way that we can go about that. Because if you remember, when we went to the brushes here, we right-clicked for the properties. Uh, there's a, a couple of extra options down here, one of them being hollow. Now, if we select this toggle block to make it, it hollow, uh, we'll be able to create a, a, a hollow cube where it creates one additive brush on the outside and then subtracts another brush on the interior. 
and that's defined uh, by the wall thickness, how far inside that interior that we actually subtract out of, uh, out of that uh, in, uh, larger cube that's added in. So let's go ahead and go to our brush real quick. So we used our go to brush uh, builder brush button. Now we're back on this shape again, which is perfectly aligned along our platform since we just added it. And now we want to go ahead and maybe bring this over to the side so we have our brush lined up to the side and we'll go ahead and increase the uh, height of our, our builder brush let's say by 512 so it's a much larger cube now we'll back up you can see we have the platform here we have our new shape here we'll go ahead and line it up And this would be a point when it would actually be perhaps easier to see this in our four viewport mode. Where, as you can see here, this is the side view. We can see exactly where we line up. Now, I want to get this bottom of this cube to line up with the bottom of this platform that we created earlier. And it's kind of hard to do at first because everything's uh, set up to this grid line. Uh, but if we go to view, and then under drag grid we can change the number of units that uh, we're moving the uh, brush whenever we do it, a, a, a transformation up or down or left or right and so that we can line this up just right let's go ahead and set this to a, 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 to a value of one and so now whenever we move this shape we can move it more precisely to line up directly with the bottom of this platform and as you can see we've managed it right there and so we have the general shape but we also want to make this hollow and so if we select that now you see there's an extra cube on the inside now with this extra cube on the inside that's going to define the interior shape of this room and so uh, with our builder brush here we've just created a large empty cube I'll go ahead and close that we have the shape set up right beside our platform and if we go ahead and hit control A again to add the brush we have a new room on the side oh. and since we've added that in now you can come in here it's dark on the inside let's go ahead and go to the unlit mode then you can see the interior of our room here we haven't made any doors yet so we can't necessarily access this but let's go ahead and go back to our brush again and it's back on this uh, uh, shape of our new room that we built and we'll open up our brush properties we'll deselect our hollow so it's back to that original exterior shape of the cube and now let's go ahead and actually make this much much smaller now we'd like to know uh, really how tall should we make a door if we wanted to create a door to enter into this room now the default size for uh, a player character in UDK is 96 units tall but uh, we don't always want to be uh, comparing our uh, sizes and shapes to a, a handful of numbers um, so what might be useful for us is to add a skeletal mesh from the content browser into our level so that we can use it as a frame of reference for what the general size of a human character should be in the game. And so if you look up here on the top, we have uh, open the content browser. And if we go ahead and click there, it's that content browser that always appears whenever you open up UDK. And now uh, if uh, you see on the top here, the uh, type here to search, if you just type skeletal mesh now there's a number of different skeletal meshes this will include all objects that have their own uh, 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 behaviors for movement but all we really need is to grab any of these let's grab say for instance this iron guard click it so that it's highlighted and now hold down the left click and drag it over to your viewport you can just drop it right there 
Now you can see, we'll go ahead and close our content browser. When we look at where we drop the guy, it set him up so that his pivot point was right in the middle and it lined up with the floor. But let's go ahead and just drag him up a little bit so that the bottom of his feet are snapped to the floor that we have. And so there he stands. We'll go ahead and close this and let's go ahead and build all. So it gives us a little warning here that he uh, uh, casts a shadow but has no physics assets assigned. Uh, don't worry about that for now since we're only using him as a placeholder to know how tall we should make our uh, doors and uh, windows and stairs and whatnot. Let's go ahead and close that. So now when we go ahead and play, we have our platform, we have uh, the uh, exterior of that room that we just built, and here we have a little guy who we can move around in our level to define how tall our door should be. He doesn't actually do anything, he just stands there. He's kind of a boring guy. We'll teach him to do more later though. And so now we want to build a door. To build a door, uh, we've already added in some brushes, right? And we have this other option to uh, subtract a brush. But we need to define the shape of the door itself, align it on that on that wall, and then we can use our, our subtractive property here to uh, be able to remove that section of brush so that we can walk through there. And so if, let's go to our, our builder brush right here and go back to our brush properties and let's make them a little bit smaller. We know it's 96 units tall. Uh, we can compare it with the size of our guy here that we've just put in uh, whenever we're done. But let's go ahead and let's say uh, let's make this uh, 128 by 128 and uh, let's say 256. And we'll go ahead and build that. And so here is our brush right here. And it might be kind of hard to see. If it, if it helps you, you can go to the uh, brush wireframe mode. Now if you remember, uh, when we used wireframe and brush wireframe earlier in our first video, we couldn't really tell a difference. But now that we've actually added uh, brushwork to the level, uh, here we can see that wireframe is showing all the geometry as it is, where the brush wireframe gives a specific shape for every single brush. And we'll also be able to see a little bit of difference here whenever we've added this brush, or whenever we've subtracted a section of it, because our subtractive brushes will have a different color. So here we've got our brush that we just created, its its uh, its shape, and let me get it back to an unlit mode here. And so now let's go ahead and bring this brush down a little bit to line up with our floor. Might be easier to see in our side view here. And so let's bring this down until the bottom of it lines up with the floor. And now we have it lined up with the floor and go ahead and close this. Now here's the brush here as well from this side and it looks like it's pretty well lined up evenly across the center. We'll go ahead and bring this over just a little bit there. Okay. And now we have it lined up where we want the door but it's really more brush than we need. We only want to subtract just the section of the wall that we want to walk through. And so if we go to the subtract, or sorry, to the uh, intersection here, it will take where our brush is right now, look for any brushes that intersect with that volume, and then readjust the size of the brush to match that perfectly. And so if we hit intersect, boom. Now it, it just shrunk to be the exact dimensions of our wall. If we hit control S, we just created a door. And so here's our door. We can walk through it here. Now if we go ahead and let's go ahead and build all. And now when we play, 
here we are. We can see the door we just created. We can walk through. It's awfully dark in here, but we can still see outside. We're okay. And so we have a start of a building that we've just created, where we have an exterior area on a platform and the interior area of this of this hollow cube that we created with our brush. Now in order to uh, be able to see what's going on in here, let's go ahead and press L and click to get another uh, another point light and you can see where it is right here. We'll go ahead and move it up a little bit. Now let's go to lit mode so we can see how well lit it is. Oh, that's nice. And we'll bring it over just a little. Align it to the middle of the room just so we have uh, some light to work with. Bring this down to about the same height as our other light. There we go. And so now we have two separate lights one over a platform and one inside of our room that we just created. And uh, the more lights we add and the different kinds of lights we add over time will uh, increase the amount of time it takes to build our lighting. So like we had in our very first uh, uh, video, we also want a light mass importance volume that will tell uh, the engine where to focus whenever it's uh, building the lighting so it doesn't have to worry about the entire level and take half an hour to build. So in order to define our light mass volume, let's go back to our brush. Our brush here is right along where our subtractive brush is for the, uh, for the door we just created. And so let's go ahead and move it out of the way. And so we can see it right there. Now we want to make sure that we can cover this entire area. And so we were able to define the uh, shape earlier just using the brush properties and by right clicking and defining the shape here with the X, Y, and Z dimensions. Um, once a brush is already added you can change its shape by just adjusting the draw scale for that brush by clicking on each of these fields down on the bottom where we can change X, Y, and Z shape for the brush after it's already uh, been added. Um, that will also uh, stretch out all of the grids on the uh, surfaces of that brush because it stretches out the material itself. So if we had uh, painted some kind of material on it and then adjusted these uh, values for the draw scale, then that would actually stretch out the material itself. So we don't necessarily always want to use that option for resizing objects. But likewise, uh, not only do we have to do it, uh, uh, have a way to do it numerically here, we can go back to our uh, our uh, various modes, the translation mode, the rotation mode, and the scaling mode. And just as we can space through those like we did before, we can also go to the non-uniform scaling and we can just non-uniformly scale this brush to begin with. And so if we were to do that and we wanted to create some larger volume, We can go ahead and just extend the shape out. Make it larger and larger. And actually, we can do it that way. It's not necessarily the best way. I just wanted to show you this way as being an option for you. And now let's get the uh, top-down view. So where are we here? Okay. So here's our brush and we want it to cover our entire area here. So let's go to the non-uniform scaling again and extend it out. We've adjusted its pivot point here so it's not necessarily uh, easy to see what's going on here. And getting this box down to the right size. So we've got it going just over the entire area there. We'll move it over slide it up and then let's make sure we got enough volume in the uh, Z direction here. So if we look down from the side you can notice the brush only goes halfway up the building here. So back to non-uniform scaling we'll extend it out in that direction. So now we have a large rectangular brush that covers both areas the platform and the room that we just created.
and it's this this overall larger shape that encompasses the entire area that we've just built and now if we go to volumes this is just below the brushes in CSG we can see there's add special brush or add volume we want to add volume and this is the light mass importance of volume right here so we've added it we can't necessarily see it right away but one thing we can also do if the brush is in our way from seeing what we've just added you can press B and that will make your brush disappear and so now we can see this yellow outline here this is the light mass importance volume that we just created uh, the light mass importance volume uh, now being set our lighting should build much more quickly if you were experiencing trouble before and of course we can always press B again to bring back our brush so that we can see where it is, where it, it is. and um, so now let's go ahead and build all and we'll go ahead and close that and play it so we have a nice little start here we have our platform we have our uh, human size reference model we have the interior of our room that we just built we have uh, a brush for this platform it's a single cube brush the brush for this room is a hollow cube brush and then we intersected a brush with the wall here and then subtracted that volume out to create the door in our next video we're going to go over the geometry mode which will allow us to adjust the shapes of uh, brushes that we have uh, uh, by choosing a combination of vertices or uh, surfaces of that edge of, of that of that brush to adjust those uh, features of that shape independently and uh, there's also uh, options for uh, slicing apart uh, brushes or combining brushes together or extruding them out and uh, that'll be the subject of our next video.